<laughs> Today I want to show you some stuff about serial connections because I think that they're pretty interesting. We can do some pretty fun stuff with them, especially with this Flipper Zero I have. I'm going to be using Linux in my Flipper Zero to illustrate uh, a, few, a couple of different types of serial connections. We're going to start off today uh, with USB to USB. For software, I'm using TIO, so that's T-I-O, uh, and it's mo available in most uh, Linux distribution repositories. This is a really simple serial connection software and uh, it works nicely. I think it's going to give us a good base to, to understand what's happening with the serial connection, but a lot of advanced users will move on to like uh, Minicom or like Picocom uh, and you're going to want some of the more advanced features available there. Historically, Serial connections were done through something like, uh, you know, a nine pin serial cable. Uh, and you might still see the remnants of that on like industrial PCs, on, uh, you know, Cisco servers, uh, Cisco servers, Cisco routers, stuff like that, uh, some servers, uh, basically places where there might be a, a headless device that needs to get direct access uh, if you can't access it by like SSH. Nowadays, though, you probably don't even have you don't have a like a COM port on your computer, so most everything is going to go through USB. Uh, and today, I'm going to be showing that through my Flipper Zero, like I said. Uh, and the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out where the Flipper Zero is sitting uh, in our device. So you want to power on your Flipper Zero. Uh, make sure, or we'll make sure it's powered on. We want to connect it to our computer, so we want to plug that in. And in Linux, we have this handy log, uh, and we're going to go to D message. Let's skip through that. What we want in the, to, to find here is, is this. So this is the, the goods here. Uh, we want to, this is information about our new uh, USB connection, which is our Flipper Zero. And it's going to give us a, a little bit of information, the product, uh, the serial number, a couple of different things. But what we really want to, is we really want to know what TTY this is in. So this is this is the vital information here, TTY ACM Zero. Uh, this is a USB ACM device. A lot of times when you're going to connect with like a more standard USB uh, serial adapter or something is going to be in TTY, uh, lowercase all capitals, USB zero or, or whatever number, uh, you know, in terms of how many device, these devices you have connected. But uh, there's something a little bit different about the, the way that the Flipper Zero interacts with the computer. So we're at TTY ACM zero. Uh, and we're going to go back over here to this other terminal I have, and we're going to use TO. We are going to um, do to slash dev, and dev is kind of like a, a virtual folder uh, or a folder where we can, I guess, virtually access our hardware. So it's like a folder with files that represent the different hardware devices. It's where you might also like mount a hard drive or a SSD from. And we're gonna go. We're gonna copy. We paste in. Uh, did I copy it? Probably didn't copy it. So we're gonna. Uh, control C or Control Shift C, yikes! Uh, control Shift V. And TO is really nice and easy because we're going to do that. There we go. Flipper CLI. Now, uh, just so you know, uh, on Linux, in order to make a connection with your Flipper, we're gonna pop over here. Uh, you're gonna have to change some UDEV rules uh, to make sure that your system can directly connect with the flipper. Uh, in order to do that, you know, you can either manually change your UDEV rules, or there is a set of UDEV rules, uh, a UDEV rule changer as a part of the QFlipper app here. Uh, you would run the QFlipper app image uh, with these options rules and install. And then if you have a weird place that you keep your UDEV rules, that's like not standard, then uh, you know you might have to put a direct path to it if you're finding you're having trouble. Changing your UDEV rules or having something change your UDEV rules isn't always the safest, but we go up here and I'm pretty sure that the setup rules that SH uh, is what we're doing here. And you can you can go to the GitHub, you can check it out. It's a very simple script. 
uh, and it seems like it's it's pretty directly targeting like just your flipper zero. So I'm pretty sure that that's like the only thing it's allowing. I don't think it's just allowing everything to connect through serial. Uh, but let's go back over here and <laughs> whoops. Uh, so let's yeah. So let's play around a little bit with the flipper CLI. We're gonna get rid of this other terminal and uh, yeah. So Flipper has a command line interface and there's a lot of interesting stuff we can do with it. Have a question mark or help. Uh, it's going to list the available commands that you can use with Flipper uh, through the Flipper CLI. You'll notice that there are some, you know, more complex things like factory reset. Uh, you can power, I believe, on and off or reset. I'm probably not on, but you can power off or uh, restart your device. Uh, and then you can find some different information. So if you if you do like exclamation point, it's going to drop a bunch of info. Uh, about uh, your device and you might this is kind of the same information that's going to come up in your uh, like uh, mobile qflipper app uh, you might see some of that information in there uh, we also are you know can still what else can we do we can like check out how much free space is available uh, I guess or free Blocks. I don't really know how to read that. It's not human readable uh, to me. I'm 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 just a you know a casual consumer here. But uh, yeah, so there's a couple different things we can do. We can also access a lot of the things that you might be able to access directly through like the UI, right? You'll notice that we have NFC uh, and sub gigahertz and some different stuff in here. Uh, what you might not know, there are some features that kind of only exist through the CLI. We're going to show off one of those now. So I'm going to go to sub gigahertz. And it's going to get, when I type it out, it's going to give us like, you know, uh, the command usage. So it's it's saying that you want to do uh, sub gigahertz, the command, and then the argument re related to that command. And if you look at these commands, there's a one, a little weird one, chat. So, uh, yeah, we have a little chat possibility here through a sub gigahertz channel now i don't think this is like lora or whatever because uh i think that that's this isn't necessarily capable of that i'm not sure exactly what they're using to to make this chat function but uh we can type in sub gigahertz chat and uh we can type <clears throat> type in the frequency that we want to use uh, and there are uh, basically a shit ton of frequencies. There's not like you're going to walk in on, and just like randomly talk with somebody because I actually I'll, I'll, uh, put in a wrong one so that it'll show you. Uh, so the frequencies can be uh, anywhere between these ranges and you can see that there are thousands and thousands and thousands of ranges, million, millions of options really, <laughs> uh, I think if I'm calculating that right. So... It's not like you're just going to randomly run into somebody, but if you and another Flipper Zero user want to have a conversation, uh, maybe you're at school or at work, right, and you're on the same network and you don't want whoever is running that network to see your conversation, you can have a sub gigahertz conversation. Now, I don't think this is necessarily encrypted or anything, but somebody would have to be pretty specifically trying to find you on a very specific sub gigahertz channel because uh, you can go down to, you know, I could, I could, let's see, let's control C to stop this. Uh, and let's say that I just want to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Mm. Oh, wait, wait, no. Yeah, see, so I mean, like the amount of possible frequencies is insane. You have to really like get in there to figure it out. You also can't, I think, uh, use frequencies that your device is like regionally blocked for. There are reasons for this too. I mean, you know, it's it's a it's important to remember that like there's like a medical uh, space within this sub gigahertz range. So I think it's like four uh, four oh six to four oh eight or whatever. It's like a medical range, and you can like fucking really mess some shit up, and like not in a funny or cool way. So it's not always just awesome to uh, take off the the blocks from every, you know take off the you know the bumpers and everything. Sometimes it's good to keep some of that stuff there. Now, 
there is another fun functionality uh, that the Flipper Zero can do with Serial, and that is the uh, UART's, uh, USB UART's adapter or, or bridge. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this downstairs and I'm gonna show you a little bit about making another type of serial connection with the Flipper Zero. All right, so I'm downstairs. I'm on my trusty little netbook here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect us using our Flipper Zero here to this Raspberry Pi. Cool. Um, this is connected through GPIO pins. So the, ras or the uh, Raspberry Pi has exposed GPIO pins, and so does uh, the Flipper Zero. I have it connected ground to ground, so that's our white cable. And the, the one thing to remember about connecting uh, for, for like a UART's bridge is that it's not like a set of speakers where you wanna go red to red and black to black. Uh, you actually wanna go TX to RX and RX to TX, right? Because you wanna receive and then from a transfer and we want to transfer and then be received. So uh, makes sense when you think about it, but it's a pretty common quick mistake to make. Now let's go back on over here. So for this one, I am going to be using Minicom. So I used, I used, I used TL last time, and this time we're gonna go Minicom. And here we go. Awesome, we're in Flipper CLI. I'm gonna go over to my <clears throat> Flipper Zero here, and I'm gonna go to the menu, and I'm gonna go to GPIO. And uh, in GPIO, the very first option is USB UART bridge. Uh, so I can hit that. So I'm not exactly sure what happened here. Uh, sometimes it's a little finicky and I am using the dev firmware. So, you know, who knows what kind of bug it might be. But uh, sometimes when I try to make a connection, uh, you know, it it like the first uh transfer doesn't get picked up and so i like when i'm just fiddling around here i thought maybe i was already uh at uh at the shell and it just hadn't come up on screen but i think i think i was uh it was just taking a second to make a connection but uh eventually the, the shell login comes up and uh i'm gonna log in here skip through the password uh and then we'll jump back in all right we're all logged in uh, and I have a shell, and this I can do anything through this. I can upgrade my system. That is a personal alias I like to use for update, pseudo apt update and pseudo apt upgrade. Cool. I can go through here, and I can uh, you know navigate my folders, my directories. I can do just about anything. So that's pretty awesome. You know, this is really easy to do with the Raspberry Pi because there's a very simple setup for it. It already has exposed GPIO opens and they're meant to be connected to. But the power of a, U a USB to UART's bridge is that some devices have kind of exposed UART's terminals that maybe aren't intended to be connected to outside of like testing at the uh, facility they're being manufactured in. But if you do a little work and you play uh, play around a little bit, sometimes you can find UART uh, receptacles that have like an open terminal, right? So the way that I just was able to log into my Pi, you might just find that you have a pretty high level uh, terminal just existing uh, that you can access and then play around with stuff and maybe get a little deep into, into the operating system on a weird thing like a printer or you know, I don't know, all kinds of odds and ends devices that might have Linux lying around in the background. You can do this a lot with routers and stuff. Uh, this is a cool functionality of the Flipper Zero. It's something I didn't get to talk about too much last time. I was pretty focused on the device itself and I, you know, I, just like what you could do with it out of the box. But there's a lot more to this device than just its face value. Uh, there's a lot more functionality there and there's a lot of cool things you can do with your Flipper Zero, and I'm learning a lot. So if you already have one of these and you're feeling a little too deep in, uh, just know that little by little, the more you fiddle with it, the more you play with it, the more you try to learn about this device, the more you're just gonna expand your skill set. And that's the thing that's really cool. Uh, I really enjoy that part about this device. So, uh, you know, if you've stuck around this far, thank you so much for hanging out and uh, watching me play around with my Flipper Zero and serial connections. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next time on Rod Linux.